I'm, I'm ambivalent to the, the projectors. Um, more clearer? All right. You're welcome. All right, so ladies and gents, what we are going to be doing today is um, the same article that we looked at the other day, um, the Stop Wasting Our Precious Cash, and the votes came in and people wanted to write one of these suckers. Um, they wanted to actually kind of look at how to write it, what to say, that kind of thing. Um, so I'm up for that. Is that a, a general consensus? Are we happy to do that or do you no. want to do something else? No, do something else. no it's fine. Now that we'll, we'll take the people who are actually here. How about we actually vote? Yeah, we can vote. All right. Who wants Where's to write one up? Uh, miss, uh, please hand out a postal vote to everyone. <laughs> uh, it's voluntary. <laughs> it's voluntary. Um, so um, if you want to... If you want to write it up, uh, raise your hand. What do you mean? So, if you want to just do a new article, we could just do a new article, like pull apart a new article. So, if you want to, let's go. Let's let's vote from the start. If you want to write up a piece, raise your hand. A new piece. Uh, write up this this piece. So we won't be doing analysis. We'll be writing. Yeah. Hand up if you want to do a new piece. New article. New article. So what do we got? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Sorry, now do the other one because the other one I didn't even count. If you want to write it up, write it up. One, two, three, four. Oh, it's a deadlock. Who didn't vote? Oh, God. And this is the problem with democracy. Yeah. Okay, how about we go out one by one and we say what we want? Uh, I don't know. Do you want to write it up or do you want to... All right. Let's just write it up. Let's write it up. All right. Let's write it up. That's true. That is true. All right. We ready? Okay, so... For the last few lessons um, in my class, we've been starting to write up a piece um, and looking at how you write it up. Um, if you have been online and checked out my YouTube, um, you would have seen that I have been kind of showing you how the structure and stuff works um, and also telling you how to survive a zombie apocalypse, which, you know, is just good general advice. Just good life advice. Yeah. Um, I kind of fluctuate actually between the Bunnings and the library. Yeah, it's good for the weapons, but I'm not very strong. So I don't know how many zombies I could really kill. So like, am I like someone who should just like flee and hide? But you know? yes, if you're not very strong, you could probably use a nail gun. Yeah, yeah. But like, maybe I should just hide. Like just wimp out and hide. Yeah, there's one thing wrong about that Bunnings picture. Yeah. I don't see a sausage. Oh, I know, there's no sausage sizzle there. That's disappointing. Yeah. I think a lighthouse would be great, but they're very thin and far on the ground these days. It's an issue. Anyway, um, so the general structure is this. Um, this bad boy, which you might have um, had a look at. Um, so obviously you can see there that you've got your general intro and you've got your articles, uh, your articles. Now, obviously, you're going to be writing three articles, so you're going to have lots of very small paragraphs. Um, your general intro, look, I know we've got iTask and whatever. You don't have to address all of the iTask, okay? Use it as like a guide of things that you could talk about rather than I must address all of these things, okay? Um, so I always say in your general intro, the things that you probably should address are uh, your, your issue, because it'd be weird not to address the issue, and part of the assessment is, do you understand the issue? That's part of the SRM. So <coughs> your general intro is a good place to address it. And then title of the articles, the authors of the articles, and then just their stances on the issue. Do you guys know what stance is? We talked about it last lesson, uh, last aim, but just in case. Yeah, it's like it's pretty much like the basis. So it's like, are they pro postal vote? Are they anti postal vote? Like, what are they on the basis? Okay, 
Um, and I like to throw in a little bit of comparison. The reason I say throw in a little bit of comparison in your, in your general intro is because uh, the SAC asks, do you understand, so the, the things that you have to S on are, do you understand the topic, so the issue, um, do you understand the articles, and you can cover that by your stances, and do you understand how to compare? Right? So if you can throw in a little bit of comparison right at the start, if you can throw a little bit of comparison in right at the start, then you're already crossing off all those S components, which, you know, can just put you at ease a little, you know? Um, so you've got that, then you've got your article, in, uh, your article introduction for your first article. Make your, make your first article your big one. Okay, so the big one, because you'll get one big one and two small ones. Okay, so the big one should be your first article. Um, so you have your article introduction and that's where you do some more um, kind of introduction stuff. So title, author, contention. So rather than giving the stance, which you gave earlier, you're going to give the contention, um, audience and relationship. Now, I don't know whether you remember last lesson we talked about the audience about this in this article. Do you remember that? Where we talked about, like initially we thought, oh, because it's an online newspaper, it's um, for young people. And then we changed our mind. Do you remember this? Not if you know what yep. I'm talking about, yes? Yeah. Yep. Who did it end up being? Who was our audience in the end? Older people. Yeah, because it talked about like pensions and stuff mm -hmm. and about like, you know, superannuation and stuff like that. And young people don't care about that because we don't think we're ever going to get old. But old people worry about that stuff. Yeah. So we decided that the audience was actually older people, okay? Um, so make sure you kind of think about the audience. And the way that you work out audience is things like, okay, well, you know, where is this published? Who is the major readership of this public, public, publication? And are there any hints in what they're writing? You know, are they preaching to a converted, so people who already agree with them? Um, or are they trying to convince their opposition? You know, because that obviously has a very different tone. You know, if you're trying to convince your opposition, you will often write something that's very, like, placating. Like, I understand. I, I, I know how that feels. You know, you talk like that if you're trying to convince an opposition. You know, if you're not trying to convince your opposition, you spend a lot of time saying that your opposition are idiots. Um, because you're not trying to convince your opposition. Because if you said to your opposition, I think you're an idiot, they're not going to be convinced, are they? They're not going to be convinced. Um, but somebody who's on the fence and hasn't decided, then they might go, ah, well, if you're an idiot, if you don't agree, well, I'm going to have to not agree then so that I'm not an idiot. You know, like, I'm going to have to avoid that, right? Um, what you might notice on this is the red part. The red part is the comparison part. So introduction, for, so article two and article three, when you write that up, that has comparison components. Okay, so you do some comparing in that. Article one, you don't have to compare. Article two needs to compare to article one. And article three needs to compare to two and, three, uh, two and one. Does that make sense? Because you wouldn't want to do comparison with Article 2, in Article 2 of Article 3, because you haven't introduced it yet. Um, and also, you'll double up. You know, you'll say the same things. So, you know, this so Article 2, just compare Article 1. Article 3, compare it to both of them. Got it? Got it, got it good, got it good, got it good? Excellent. Cool. All right. So, and then obviously your conclusion, that's really easy. Restate your contention, talk about the major comparison points, and thin. Done. Move on. Okay? Questions? There lies the lesson. No, no, it's okay. We're going we're gonna to keep going. All right. Um, so, do we want to write a general intro? Do we want to do intros, or do you want to write, like, go straight for the meat and do paragraphs? 
What would you like? Do you want to see intros? I can talk you through some intros I've written before, um, but we can write one from the start. It's up to you. Whoa, whoa. Jacob? Did you say you have some? I do. I have some I prepared earlier. Would you like to see those? Right, let's do that. Pardon? I've already emailed it to you, my love, because you were in my class. So you're you're good. Yeah, I can. I can. Yep, definitely. Definitely. Um, let's just pull them up. Where have I saved them? Um, so in my classes, we've been writing one together um, and just kind of doing the best job we can of one. Um, so, if I can find it, there it is. Okay. Oh, shush. You? Okay. It's a very loud noise, isn't it? I might actually get rid of my emails just so that we don't have to keep hearing it. I nearly heard another one. Oh, I got 20 seconds in. All right. Okay. So, this was the general intro that we wrote as a class. Um, the great thing about this one, the great thing about your general intro is that the issue bit is going to be the same for any, any piece you're going to write because the issue is the same. The issue is solid. You already know what it is. You know, it's not like in the exam where you don't know what the issue is going to be. In this, you know what, what it's going to be. So you could polish, you know, a piece up and get ready to serve it. Um, so the issue, issue is in yellow. Um, so we said, during 2017, the Liberal government used a postal survey to decide whether um, Australia should legislate same-sex marriage. This postal survey reported that the majority of voters who voluntarily replied to the survey were supportive of same-sex marriage. Uh, off the back of this event, in 2018, Prime Minister Turnbull suggested that this could be used to decide whether or not Australia has a referendum on becoming a republic. So I literally just, with an unbiased you know, tone, just give the issue. You don't have to give lots about it. It doesn't need to be detailed. Three or four sentences. That'll do you. Okay? Something brief that just shows, I know what this issue is about. Done. Okay? Um, but make sure that you're not putting your opinion. That's really, really important. Okay, because you are analysing machines. You are not people with opinions. You are just spitting out data. Does that make sense? So it's not like a creative or even a text response where you actually do have some sort of opinion. This, no opinion. You are analysing other people's opinions, not giving your own. Okay? So that's my intro. Uh, that's my issue. And then you'll notice that I just kind of go through the motions. So I've got the first article, the Owen Jacques article, which is the first article in the pack. So Owen Jacques uh, opinion piece, and then I've got the title. Um, opposes the idea of using a postal vote. That's his stance. Okay. In contrast, and that's my little word of comparison. So that's my little my little sprinkle of comparison. My little sprinkle. Um, Prime Minister, Prime Minister, uh, sorry, Minister Dutton, aka Franklin the Turtle, because let's be honest, that's what he looks like. He looks like Franklin the Turtle so bad. He just needs a shell. Um, praises the use of the postal vote in the same-sex marriage uh, in the same-sex marriage debate in his article. Um, so that's the you know the I think it's like the third article, the Dutton one. Um, however, he agrees that this should not be a universal approach. That's his stance. Okay. So that would be a general intro. Done. So it's not huge, it's not overly complicated. It's just showing, yes, I understand the basics and I am ticking off all the things that I have to show you I can do. Questions? No? Makes sense? Yep. Yeah. All right. Here's an article intro. And again, article intros, it's a very straightforward process. I've got the title, Ballot on Becoming a Republic. Now, once you've mentioned the title in full once, you don't have to do that again. 
Okay, so in this one, I've already mentioned the title in full once. It's a really long title, so I just cut it down with an ellipsis. Okay, so I just had ballot on becoming a republic, dot, dot, dot. Okay, I could even shorten it further if I really wanted. If I was in an exam, I would probably shorten it to ballot on, dot, dot, dot. Just so that I can fire it out quickly. Um, I've got the title, I've got the author, I've got the contention. Notice that I use the word contend. This essay is not for hiding the answers. You know how like in your creative you've got to kind of be a bit subtle about like showing the answer that you're trying to give? In this you should actually show me, like I'm looking for the word contention, I'm looking for the word tone, argument, like I'm, I'm looking for those words so that I can go, yes, he's got the tone. Yes, he's got the contention. Yes, he understands what the issue is. Good, move on. Especially when we're talking about the exam. They're actually looking for those words. And if you haven't got them, then they're having to fish for them and that makes them annoyed. They want to be able to find it quickly because um, they will read your piece for like two minutes tops on the exam. They are firing through those buggers because they have to. Um, so I've got um, title, author, contention and then the next one I've got that's highlighted in grey, I mean I was running out of colours at this stage, sorry. Um, in the grey I've got um, the audience. So I've said the audience for this piece, this is for the um, the ballot on becoming a republic, the Owen Jacques one. The audience for this piece would be predominantly younger Australians that were pro-same-sex marriage and anti-postal vote, which may indicate a left-leaning stance. So I kind of give a bit of an idea of the, the sort of people who would read this article. Okay? And then in the orange, I've got the relationship. Um, so the relationship I've said, Jacques seems to have an underlying message of pro-monarchy. Um, if you've read that, that article, it's kind of got this hint of, of pro-monarchy in it, that it, he's like, I want, I want the, the royals, not like sexually, um, just like he seems to like them. Um, so underlying message of pro-monarchy and a definite sympathy towards the the plight of the LGBTQI community. He seems to kind of, you know, hint at that, that he has kind of a leaning towards them. Um, so I, I just kind of indicate the relationship. But what I'm also doing there is I'm kind of hinting at the Easter egg in that article, which is that pro-monarchy thing, that he's actually pro-monarchy which changes his opinion on postal voting because we know that Turnbull wanted to use it to try and get a republic um, and get rid of, get rid of the monarchy, um, get rid of queens, uh, the queen. So that's kind of worth hinting in your intro that you know what the Easter egg is. You know what the, the kind of message is that isn't forthright because there's always like little kind of Easter eggs in these articles little kind of planted things that it's like, most people won't notice that, but if you notice it, it's worth mentioning. Because they'll go, hmm, that's clever. Does make sense? Cool. Questions about intros? They're pretty self-explanatory, which is why I was like, we probably don't need to write them together, but we can. Did you want to write one for the... Um, Stop wasting the edit this editorial for the precious cash one, or do you do you just want to move forward? Thoughts? Lib wants to move forward. She's all about about forward projection. Did you just ask Michael well, why he's like this? Just annoying. No, just annoying. <laughs> he's awake. You should be grateful. Oh, Usually he's, he's asleep. Just, just just <laughs> Carry on. Thank you. Thank you for that permission, Jordan. All right. So, do we want to write some paragraphs of this? Yeah, let's do it. All right. So, shall we? All right. So, what was our first argument? Tell me, what was the first argument that we identified in Stop Wasting Precious Cash? you got to be specific. 
What did we say? So what you've written is the plebiscite is costly. I did write that. I did write that. Are we happy with that? Is that being our first argument? You seem excited. You good? You good? Okay. You just like... You seem tired. You're okay? Okay. You and I both, mate. We... Are it's a tired life we lead. Um, so the first argument is going to be the, that the plebiscite is costly. Um, and what kind of tone do you think he, he expresses this? Have a bit of a look. Do we identify tones? Oh, we did. So the tonal shifts we said were frustrated, sarcastic, factual, reasonable. So let's have a bit of a look. Where does he say the plebiscite is costly? Uh, what, one, two, three, four, five, six. The backup plan, oh yes, yep, yep. So the backup plan from the government is that Australians will have a say on same-sex marriage in November by the way of 122 million non-compulsory vote, uh, postal vote. If the plebiscite somehow gets through, according to P PWC Australia, uh, they say taxpayers will be on the hook for 525 million once the cost of campaigns and loss of pro productivity is taken into account. What would you say the tone is there? What do you think? You're really factual in this. Yeah, I think it is. I think it's quite factual. Like he's just kind of stating it, isn't he? He's not like outrageous. Like he's not saying an outrageous amount or absurd amount. Like he's not. He's just stating it as it is, isn't he? Like, I would say that sentence, that paragraph, could really be in, say, a newspaper article, like an unbiased newspaper article, that it's like, this is just the information. Yeah? Yeah, I think a factual tone. I think we go with that. So, the two things that you put in your topic sentence are the tone and the argument. Okay? So, topic sentence, tone... What's up? What's up, my dear? I, know, I, was, I, was, gonna, I was thinking, like, well, by him simply like stating the fact and like not employing, it's sort of like a a, um, a persuasive technique in and of itself. Mm. By like, it sort of like um, adds credibility to his statement. It like, does. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's a way to say it. It's, it's, it's like um, it, it like, makes it more. It seems more re and reasonably. Like, he's yeah. Like, seems more credible and therefore mm. like an authority on the issue. Yeah, like yeah, definitely. Yeah, so you could actually, Rick brings up a good point. You could actually analyse the tone if you wanted. Like the tone is still a persuasive device, so you could analyse tone if you wanted. Um, so help me write this topic sentence. What do I write? I need to write the tone and the argument. Give me a sentence. Give me a sentence that has both of those. Adopting A, I like that. Whoop. <laughs> Adopting a a factual tone. Shark. Well, we're not saying continues because we haven't started. This is our first paragraph. So Jacques, what? Commences. Commences. I like that. Topic sentence. Yes, darling. Um, oh, sorry, we're going off this stop wasting precious, precious uh, cash. Oh, yeah. sorry, my bad. My bad. I just slipped into Jacques. Um, I've been talking about Jacques and he's just stuck in my head now. Um, I'm just, oh, French man. No, not really. Um, okay, so what do we. <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> That is not true. That that is that is a, a racial stereotype. Um, what is a racial stereotype? About French people. 
that they smell. They don't smell. They just step. Race not a race, then. Yeah, they are. Well, I think you would still call it a racial group. Oh, well. Anyway, yeah. that's that's not important. Um, so if it's an editorial, what do I write there? Adopting a factual tone. Who is commencing? The author, yeah, I could say the author. I could say the editor. Um, or I could just say the editorial commences. I need an extra E. Okay. Um, any of those would be fine. It wouldn't really matter. You, you choose your own adventure there. All right. So I've got my topic sentence. What is the persuasive divide, uh, the persuasive pull that we want to use? What, what do you particularly want to talk about? What's a phrase or something that you really want to talk about? Um, that you're like, that's really persuasive. Talking about Good. Taxpayers will be on the hook. Good. Okay. The editor states... Is that big enough? Do you want it bigger? Like that? Is that helpful? Okay. States that taxpayers will be on the hook... I've lost it. For $525 million once the cost of campaigns To that bit I don't just I don't just throw out the quote and just like put it as itself I give a little bit of context to it so I've just said something like the editor states that and then I've given the rest of the quote so that it's an embedded quote rather than just like a quote hanging there in the air does that make sense okay um, all right so I've given the quote now I need to do my question one do you remember the question one question two yeah Da, da, da. There it is. It's also up on the board because the year 11s are doing it at the moment. Although they were like, we can't read it. It's too small. They're such whingers. Like, man up. Yeah. Sooks. Sooks. Anyway. <laughs> so. All right. So what would we say? What is, what is telling the telling us that the taxpayer is on the hook for 25 sorry 525 million dollars um, what what does that attempt to make me think or feel yeah makes the reader feel overwhelmed yeah well. good Okay, so I've said this staggering amount, uh, this staggering figure attempts to make the reader 
feel overwhelmed with the amount of money uh, that would be wasted if the postal survey goes ahead. Okay, so I've talked about the general, what that general phrase would make me feel. Now, what I would then suggest you do is you go in and you go more specific and you pick out particular words and yeah, you can quote them, but like particular words and talk about the impact on partic of particular words. So for instance, um, the word taxpayer. That's obviously appealing to a very particular uh, like demographic. So that tells us a lot about who the audience is. So obviously that word has been chosen to target the audience to make them realise that they are, it is their money that is being wasted. It's not government money, it's their money. It's my $525 million. Not just this kind of wish wash of money. Does that make sense? Okay. Moreover, the use of the word taxpayer is used to um, to what's another word I can use instead of attempts? So I was going to say the use of the word taxpayer is used to what? Well, I want to say it's like it's trying to do this. Because remember, I can't say that, that these techniques actually do something. I can only say that they attempt to do something. Does that make sense? Because words can't make you do anything. But they can try to. Endeavor. Good, okay. I actually have another little gift for you because I am full of gifts and bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> the two things no, 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 sure. I have. Yeah. I am. I am. That's why I'm so good at this game. Yeah. People who are good at talking swap. Which is why I'm doing Persuade someone of the opposite. Way. Yeah. I'm trying to dissuade you from drawing on the desks. Um, so yeah, so the front page is really good because it's got a whole lot of words that you would probably use. And then the inside has a whole lot of words to describe tone. And I know that people are really bad at tone. So that could be helpful. Not very few useful tone words. Yeah. Okay, so. What could we use from that list? Is used to what? Influence? Yeah? Well, yeah, so I have to say something like, um, something like suggests. Yeah? Um, alludes to, that could work. Allude to the audience. Who would be predominantly taxpayers that it is their money that is going to waste. Right. So I just went that little inch further and said, moreover, the use of taxpayer is used to allude to the audience who would be predominantly taxpayers, that it is their money that is going to waste. Okay, so that just gives a little bit more kind of depth to the analysis. Um, and, you know, English teachers like depth. That's what we're into. So give, give the people what they want. Any questions about what I'm doing there? So the first one I kind of talk about overall what that phrase does and then the second bit of my question one answer is going into specifics about words and word use. Happy Jordan? Mm -hmm. Excellent. Let's do question two then.
Unless anyone has any questions, queries, concerns? Please, could you say that? Yes, my darling. No, 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 no
So this would all go together. Ta-da! Now I would say for each argument, I would say you need two, if you've got time, three persuasive techniques. Two is something that like you should try for. Three, look, if you can get it done, great. Okay, so what I would do then is add another persuasive technique onto this. I would try and make at least two per argument, yeah, yeah. Um, but obviously you've got a lot to cover, so make sure you're picking the best ones. And something that actually we had a few people asking today, um, who was it? It was Chantal, wasn't it? That she was like, what do you do if you kind of see that, okay, I'm halfway and I'm not halfway through my piece um, and I've got to touch all three articles. I've got to at least attempt to analyse all three articles to get the S for the unit. What do I do? Basically, I would try and merge some of my arguments. So if you can kind of draw some of the arguments together, so for instance, with this stop wasting precious cash, um, what you could do is join together, say the plebiscite is costly and the, it's nonsensical to keep trying to get it through parliament. You could draw those two together and go, the first argument is that it's costly and it's pointless and draw that together as one argument. Does that make sense? And then do one persuasive technique for each. Yeah? Um, in the actual SAC, you know mm. how it's going to be one article that's bigger than the rest and there's going to be two smaller? Yep. When we actually lay out our like, SAC articles, do we have to do it in that order? Do we have to do articles like article one is the longest and all I would, just because like you're probably going to spend more time talking about the first one. Yeah. So it's probably easier to make that your first one. Article 23, yeah. No, do, do whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's up to you, because you won't be calling them Article One, Article Two. You'll be calling them whatever their titles are. Yeah. So you can choose, but I would always make my first one my biggest one. Yeah, to just get it out of the way more than anything. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So if you feel like you're going tight for time, pull together some of your arguments, just so that you can kind of keep pushing through. Okay. Um, so what could I say there to lead it? Because like I don't want to just like vomit out my next um, my next technique or my next persuasive pull. Um, so what do I need there? I need kind of like a a segue word. Additionally. Yeah, I could use additionally. Yep. So anything like that. Additionally, furthermore, moreover, anything like that would work. Okay. I think actually is that on the list. I should probably get a list of those too. I will. Um, additionally, whoop, Rick has ha had to suffer through two hours of my poor typing and now this. Oh, no, I, I with you. I'm a terrible typer. I'm pretty bad. It's, no. I really want to be good too. Just, just forget about the... the and it, it's worse because like I know people are watching me. So I know that I'm going to stuff up more because kids like are watching me. Yeah, I get <laughs> stage fright. I get typing stage fright. Actually, that's not that's not a joke though because I once had to do – so I, I taught like a VET subject yeah. and to teach a VET subject you have to do like an intelligence test, oh. which is so unfair. But you had to do – we had to do this little test and you couldn't use any calculators or anything oh, no. and there was like a maths <laughs> component. And it was like, um, petrol is $1.47 a litre and you want to buy 15 litres. How much is it? I couldn't do it. I have no, like, I didn't even know where to start. I was like, what do I do? And I sat there for like 15 minutes trying to work it out and just like getting more and more anxious about it. And then I just wrote down a number. Like, I just like, I was like 58. Oh, was it not multiple? Like, I just... <laughs> No, it wasn't even multiple choice. Yeah, I had to, I had to know the answer, and I just was like, fifty eight dollars. I have no idea. Um, and they were like, um, so, your 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 literacy stuff's fine, um, but your your numeracy. Um, luckily, you're not teaching anything about numeracy. I'm like. 
because she's like, yeah, you failed badly. <laughs> um, also, like vet courses. So I was teaching vet event management. Event? Yeah, event management. So like running like events, parties. Oh, God. That they said it was fine. So I went I went forward and taught the course. It was fine. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I can use I can use a calculator. I just can't do basic maths. I like if someone said and I had a calculator, it's a dollar forty seven a litre, it's fifteen litres, I'd know what to do. But I can't do it in my head under pressure. I just I just freaked out. You want to buy 15 litres without the calculator? Oh, no, I can't do that. No, I can't do that. $22. Take your time. Daniel, you go. I have no idea. That's like three cents off. I literally have no idea how to do it in my head. I need a calculator. You don't need a calculator. And that is why I haven't passed maths tests since year nine. Anyway, so you need something like additionally, like furthermore, something like that. Then you head into, then you head into, I shouldn't tell these stories. Not only does it make me look stupid, it also distracts people. Uh, <laughs> and it's going on YouTube, so now everyone knows my incompetence. Excellent. Um, let's hope Mr. Kenny doesn't work out how to use YouTube. Uh, <laughs> He's worked out how to use Facebook though, so that's an issue. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure he would have worked out how to use YouTube by now. There is no promise of that. Um, it's only just he's worked out how to like access the Facebook page. That's it. Actually, um, question: Who is in control of the Mary Me Facebook? Mr. Luchek. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, he's lovely. I love Mr. Luchek. Yeah, he does all that stuff. I, if only. Um, I think some of them are too rude. Um, so, come on. No, I would get in so much trouble. Um, so, then I lead into my next technique. Okay, and I do the same thing like I did here. The editor states the taxpayer will be on the hook, blah, blah, blah. So, I, f I just go straight into my next technique. Make sense? So, I would say two techniques would be fine. Now, the next thing I do want to show you um, is how to work in the comparison. Because I think a lot of people, sorry, my voice just broke. Um, I think a lot of people feel anxious about how to work in the comparison. Like, how do you do that on top of the analysis? But it's actually really easy. You don't have to say big things. You just can add little things. So, for instance, if we compared it to the Jacques article, because you guys have all read that one, you know, the first one the pro-monarchy one that I told you about, that we were just talking about? Not if you know what I'm talking about. Yes? Okay, so comparing this to the Jacques article, the Jacques article has a similar stance, doesn't it? Has a similar stance to um, this article that, that it's a bad idea. So you could say here, adopting a factual tone, um, Instead of saying adopting a factual tone, instead I could add something like, unlike Jacques' sarcastic tone, because his, his tone in that article is super sarcastic. Boys, <coughs> in the Jacques article, he's super sarcastic, right? So I could just say, unlike uh, Jacques', I should have an apostrophe, sarcastic tone, Boys, shut up. Um, the author, edit blah, 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 commences his discussion with a factual tone. Discussing... discussing the costly nature of the postal vote. Okay, So all I've had to do is do a little bit of shuffling around and there is my comparison. We do it in poo because we don't have enough highlighter colours. Um, but that's, that, is, that, that would be considered comparison. That's enough. Okay, um, 
I might kind of go, um, the editor states that taxpayers will be on the hook for 25 million, blah, blah, blah. Um, I might add here that um, this, oops, this con uh, is in contrast to Jacques, who doesn't rely, oops, where am I up to? Rely on figures to further his argument. Because he doesn't, does he? He doesn't really use figures. He's all about like talking about like emotions. So that is another comparison. So that goes in poo. Does that make sense? And you don't have to do it for every single sentence. You don't have to compare every single sentence. Just sprinkle them in. Just sprinkle, just sprinkle. I would probably say in my next persuasive, um, persuasive um, pull that I do in this, art, in this paragraph, I might do another two and that would be enough. So you just want to sprinkle them in. Does that make sense? So it's actually really, really easy. And if you look in the classroom um, on the right hand wall, you will notice there is a whole words of comparison mural. Mural? Sure. Um, there's a whole word of comparison thing that you can actually use. The, the words are there that you can steal. So steal. Cool? Any questions about comparing? It's been a long day. It always feels that way. Um, any qu questions? Can you say this to us, not this, but the one before that, like the to your class? Of course. I will send you whatever you desire. The SAT questions? No, I probably won't send you that. Um, but yes. So do you want me to... I'll send you this and I'll send you the one that I was talking about before. Did you want that as well, this? Yeah, sure. Yeah, no worries. Unless you're going to use it for homework. Are you just getting out of homework? Okay. Then yes, I will send it to you. And we also, just to kind of make it make more sense so we did this as an article one paragraph example yeah. and then we did what we just did with article and we added comparison to it so we put comparison in it just to kind of show how to use comparison two articles, yeah so we because like three will just be the same won't it like you just add words of comparison talking about two articles rather than just one no. so you know that some of that poo will be the first article and some of it will be the second you refer to first no. Call them by their name. I would just use their, their author names. It's the easier way to kind of do it. To just talk about Jacques' article, Dutton's article. Yeah. Cool? Questions, queries, concerns? Yay. Not next week, the week after. Yeah. That's why it is really important that you practice this writing skill. Because literally, the skills that I just taught you then are all the skills that you need to do this sack. Literally, we just finished skills. Now just practice those skills for the next week and a bit and you'll be sweet. Okay? You just need to practice them. And the weird thing that you'll notice when you start writing this is that you use the same phrases over and over and over again. And so the more you write this, the easier it gets because you're like, oh, I'll just use that phrase that I used the other day. Oh, I'll just, yeah. So the people who do well in this sack are the people who have actually like prepped and prepped and prepped because it's literally they just vomit up all the stuff that they've been doing in the past. I know, who would have thought preparing for a sack means that you will do well in it? Who would have thought? Who would have thought? I mean, I wish someone had mentioned that earlier. Mate, I have. I have run numbers on that. 
I can give you those numbers if you really want them. Because I have an engineer for a husband who has a mug that says, I love Excel. So he literally puts all of my data into spreadsheets. That takes yep. He's got issues. Yeah. Like, there is not an aspect of my life that isn't spreadsheeted. Nothing. Nothing in my life is not spreadsheeted. I can't read a spreadsheet. So it means nothing to me, but it makes him happy. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will send you all. I will send you.